For women, I became, of course, a tremendous mentor. And as you can understand, I attracted a lot of students as a result of that because I was one of the first. And I had 30 students over my career at uh, McGill, both women and men. Catedrática emérita en la Universidad McGill de Montreal, Gertrude Robinson está considerada una de las fundadoras del campo de la comunicación en Canadá. Fue la primera presidenta de la Canadian Communication Association y la primera editora del Canadian Journal of Communication. Se forma con referentes de la economía política como Herbert Schiller o Dallas Smith y ha realizado importantes contribuciones al área especialmente relacionadas con el análisis del sistema de medios en la antigua Yugoslavia y la comparación internacional de agencias de noticias en América y Europa. Pionera en los estudios de género, ámbito en el que ha prestado especial atención al rol de las mujeres en la sociedad y al de las periodistas en los medios de comunicación. Ha trabajado activamente contra la marginalización de las voces de investigadoras, apostando por la inclusión de mujeres y temáticas feministas en las agendas científicas de la disciplina comunicativa. Primera directora del programa de doctorado en comunicación en la Universidad McGill, ha sido chair en la Association for Education in Journalism y vicepresidenta de la IACR, conocida en castellano como la Asociación Internacional de Estudios en Comunicación Social. Ha resumido su carrera de la siguiente forma. Habiendo sido ignorada y golpeada en la cabeza, incluso como catedrática, todavía me dejaron entrar. Supongo que no esperaban un ave fénix. How were your years as a PhD student? How was being a woman back then in the 60s getting a PhD? How was that experience? You were surrounded by men. Your teachers were all men. And if they didn't treat you well, there's really nothing you could do about it. It made me very much of a feminist right off the bat because there were no female mentors in those days. We were just as women in this new field, having to organize ourselves, um, having to slowly settle. But with the help of some male mentors, like George Gerbner and Dallas Smythe, became my mentors and very, very influential in my career. It is unbelievable that you were already thinking about gender issues, right? Like back then, like so many decades ago. Um, Gigi, would you say that you have faced a lot of gender issues in your career? Since when I went as a visiting scholar to University UBC for one semester to, to teach gender studies, I'm sitting there in my office, unpacking my books and my computer and things like that. And in comes this guy and says, here are 12 sheets of paper I need to have typed up by 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And I reel around and I say, I'm Professor Dr. Gertrude Robinson, and who are you? Upon <laughs> which <laughs> <laughs> just about drops his papers. And from then on, every morning he comes in and says, Professor Robinson, how are you enjoying your time at UBC? And what I was teaching was gender studies, you know? So he didn't have a clue. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that in general women have been mute or silenced in the field of communication? 
I had uh, women had problems. For instance, uh, there was a communications journal up in Canada that was staffed by only male editors. So when I first got there, because of gendered issues, they didn't know about women's articles and feminism and stuff like that. So that was the first thing that we had to do. I had to become an agitate that males and females had to be editors in the communications journal. You have so many achievements, right? Like so many recognitions. What is the contribution that you are most proud of? Gender. Awesome. <laughs> This book, my dear, that is uh, what I think is my major achievement. It summarizes what I worked on. It shows my international interests because I love to do comparisons. What has been the most rewarding thing in your career? When you look back, what has been the most rewarding? I uh, committed myself uh, to the communications field, uh, continued my studies in that. That meant at my time that I would go to Yugoslavia and see the news agency. Um, oh, I had fun. <laughs> I, I loved that uh, I could travel around um, slowly but surely more women were joining me and we were doing we we're moving internationally i became a member of the international communications association uh, that gave lectures and had academic meetings all around the world so we traveled and that was fascinating those were unexpected you know wonderful experiences uh, so that was something that uh, uh, I really enjoyed very, very much. <laughs>